Hey, welcome to the Michelle Mission. Two men, one podcast, every black film ever made. My name is Vincent Williams, and I'm joined as always by my partner. Hey, what's up? Holla at your boy. This is Len, a.k.a. The Bat Triple. And on this stop on the, mich- on the mission, here in the last show of September, <laughs> we are going to witness a morality play mm. as the forces of good battle the forces of evil in 1945's Go Down Death. The choice of Lynn Webb. But before we see that once again the wages of sin, oh boy, is death. We have some business, I believe. As always, we want to thank each and every one of you out there who are watching us streaming live via StreamYard on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Shout out to everyone in the chat, Robert Monroe Jr. Robert Monroe Jr. Give you your propers. George Carmona, Aaron Fry, Deborah Battle, Jeffrey Thomas, Bree Bree 517, and each and every one of you as you join the chat and say hello and swap the recipes with one another. Um, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, folks. They never give us a recipe. They never give us a recipe. No, never. This is... it, but that's fine. It's a very select club in the chat. Apparently. So. Apparently, I I, I blame Deborah. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, uh, we did we didn't get necessarily emails, Vince, but we did get a comment on our review of the wood. Okay, from our good friend at the Scenario Radio Show, Van Everett. Hey, what's up, Van? He hit it up and said that this is one of my all-time favorite movies. Okay. The Wood. I think your point about many of the other movies in that era being date movies mm-hmm. speaks to why The Wood is so underappreciated. The fact that it centers on the men slash boys seems to put it lower on a lot of women's must-watch list. I mean... I think there was something to that as far as I, I, I won't even say on women's much watch list. I, I do think a fair amount of men see movies mm-hmm. as date opportunities. That's right. That's right. So if I'm not going on a date, mm-hmm. I might not necessarily go to the movies. Now, I, I'm curious about that because there are select films that I can I shouldn't say Ken, that I will go with my boys, like, you know, with my friend Calvin or, you know, or Eric and any of my boys right. will go see those movies. Usually, those are dumb action movies. Okay. Or the big, crazy superhero movies. Sure, I was about to say the genre stuff. I was about right. to say, understand we have that nerd space mm-hmm. that we would go and see the science fiction, the superhero the, so, but if you don't like the genre films, yeah, you know, I guess the action films like you're talking about, and even though the, the and the action films, they've got to be big and dumb, right? You know, because there are some action films, but that are kind of like action dramas, right? And I still, not, I'm not going to go with Calvin to see see them. You know right. what I mean, right? But um, I wonder, do, do you fall into that same same thing? Because it's it's probably different with you because you're married. Right, so you've almost got like a built-in, like. Well, there are things that I would go see by myself. We, yes, right. We talked. Right, about right. This. There, there are films I would go see by myself, and now I actually created a movie partner f- to oh. see the genre films in your daughter. And, right, right. Camille has actually grown into the yes. person yes. that goes to see the big dumb stuff with me. Yeah. See, you know what? See, in mine, my creation is now in you know new mexico right right so th- there goes my there goes my excuse for the genre films the big dunk ashkin films and the animated films right right but see your thing is you won't go by yourself like you have to embrace that you have to embrace going by yourself i can't i don't i feel weird okay it feels weird okay i'm sorry okay Every 
zombie thing that I've seen in the past decade. I saw by myself. You saw by yourself. You wouldn't go with your boys to a, a to a zombie movie. Nobody's really here, and it's like if That's I'm right, all your right, right. Like so, if I'm going like in the middle of the day, like like like, what, what was it? Um, not twenty fifth. 28 days later yeah 28 days later 28 weeks later mm -hmm. i talk all the time about that remake of um oh what was the fast zombie movie oh um uh the, the with brad pitt is that the one you're talking about i think i saw that yeah world war z, z nation yeah, yeah world war z yeah you know, something like that yeah yeah so you know <laughs> but i completely i think that's a really good read on the wood yeah, how it wasn't a date movie necessarily, mm -hmm. but it also didn't fall in that kind of big that guy dumb. Yeah, you know, hey, let's let's all drink beer and <laughs> talk about sports, right? And then go see the wood. Like, like, like the wood doesn't really lend itself. You always say sports like is a curse word. That's not a curse <laughs> word. It's just you know. Anyway, anyway, um, yay, our team, boo, your team. <laughs> um, it, this actually reminds me that uh, Janine, who is also in the chat, hey, Janine, hey, what's Tuesday, going on? Mm -hmm. She has sent us a comment, uh, uh, a little bit ago, and it was around the time when I was asking about somebody to go see Candyman, right? Right. And she had made mention that, hey, Len, I would go to the movies with you. Oh, okay. Which, which was nice. And I appreciated Janine. And I wanted to, you know, say thank you um, for offering that. But it got me to thinking that we have so many people in our chat. And, and you know, we have we have a, a lot of fans. But let's, let's tell like it is. We have some people in our chats that are almost like regulars, like right. kind of moderators. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it dawned on me that outside of a select few, mm -hmm. we don't know where they're from. Right, right. People are are scattered. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So it might be interesting if, if they could start putting in like a little bit of, of where they're from, and especially if you send us an email, let us know where you're from because mm -hmm. we know George Kimon is in in New York. Right. Um. I know M Melissa is from is all the way in uh, New New Zealand. Right. Um, but some of the others, and I don't know, and I'm assuming a couple of them I know are your friends, and right? So right, and then you know, like Maurice is in L.A. Maurice is in L L.A. Uh, right. Summer is in Philadelphia, right? So, uh, so but it people might be kind of sort of cool. scattered. Yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. Just, just see how see who's how where. Yeah, see who's where it is. Right you now, uh, Robert Monroe Jr. Thank you. He is in Schenectady. Schenectady. There you go. All right. That's, that's cool. That's you need to start going to the movies by yourself, though. I what feel like you're. I feel like you're losing movie opportunities. I, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Don't get me wrong. I would. Okay. Now that I think about it, I used to what I used to go to the movies almost habitually by myself, and, mm -hmm. and they stopped having it uh, like around the time that uh, Olivia would have been age appropriate to go was they used to do like a little animated short festival. Okay. Um, here in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I would go to them all by myself all the time. So I enjoyed them and they stopped having them like right around when Olivia got like about age where she would have been into some of the weird, because right, right, animation right. It wasn't Disney or anything. Um, but and George Kimona says that I might meet someone there. Well, that's <laughs> that's definitely a point. I don't know because I tend to go to the movies in the evening, and then in the evening, it's not usually right. Right, people, people go, going by themselves. Right, right. Dude. I was I was about to say like the afternoon movie, yeah. by yourself is fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well. All right. <laughs> I, I I'll check it out. Okay. All right. All right. So, the, so there's that. All right. Uh, let's see. Did we have any other messages? Oh, we did. Um, I'm just going to put this out here real quick because I think it, I want people to put this on their radar. Melinda, Belinda Silber sent us a um, email mentioning that the Chicago International Film Festival. Okay. Will be showing a documentary as part of their Black Perspective series, Oscar Micheaux, the superhero of Black filmmaking. 
Okay. Um, it's by an Italian director, and it will be streaming in the Midwest from October 14th through the 24th. And she she put it out there as, as, as a documentary that we might want to try and um, get some information about, maybe see if we can't speak with the people about it. Uh, but it sounds pretty dope. I, I, okay. I like All it. All right. And I think that it's very cool that over the last few years, Oscar Michelle has I was been getting just his about just to deal. say that. I was just about to say that. It seems like there has been this renaissance mm-hmm. of Oscar Michelle material. Yeah. Over the past few years. So I, 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 very well deserved and very happy about that. Me too. So that's pretty dope. And we, and last, we got a comment from a suggestion, I believe. Let me make sure if I can find that. Oh, Oh, from um, from Ibn Ibn Suleiman. Okay. Hey, Ibn. Who sent us a suggestion for... Um, for horror month, which will be coming up, okay, very shortly. And he suggested, "Hey guys, I know it may be a long shot since you two sound pretty set on your choices for this year's October movie reviews, but I like to suggest Death by Temptation." We did Death by Tim. I'm sorry. <laughs> Heard about it in a documentary I came across about Black horror history. Mm-hmm. A documentary I highly suggest, by the way. Um, soon as I saw it, I thought it would be a perfect movie for the Michelle mission to review for Halloween. It is, in fact, a perfect movie for us to review, so much so that in our first year of celebrating Horror Month, yeah, it uh, with episode number 38, we reviewed wow, Death was by it Temptation 38, yeah, yeah, that's how early it on. So, I guess that's really what that's what in our first year, wow. Yeah, I don't think I remember doing it that early. Me neither. I knew we did it. But yeah, episode 38, we reviewed Death by Temptation. And the documentary that he is referring to, he doesn't refer to it by name, but it can it can only be uh, horror noir. Right, right, which right. Which is a cool documentary that uh, was on Shudder. Yeah, do I remember? While. Yeah. I think, they, I think it's now it's got more of a wider release mm-hmm. so people can talk about it. So that's why I wanted to read the email. It's an idea of introducing people to that documentary, Horror Noir, Mm N-O-I-R-E, which definitely goes into the full history of black representation in horror films. Yeah, yeah. And it's a very, very cool. um, And Evan, while while you should indeed listen to the old episode, I will say, A, I I think you should see Death by Temptation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. B, Death by Temptation will be coming up in October. Yes. I, I think it's relevant to one of your choices, actually. We haven't now have we announced our choice? We haven't we announced, have announced our choices. Yeah, but one of your choices, I thought about death. I said Death by Temptation is going to be a reference. A reference for one of your choices. Okay. Yeah. I, I think we'll we'll announce the, yeah. the, at the end of the show. Yeah. Cause this will be Yeah, really like good. like I said mine, but but yeah, Lynn has a couple of really good polls. <laughs> yeah, Lynn has a couple of really I good polls. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. People are going to be so bad. Anyway, um, so that is our that is our uh, our commentary from everyone. Thank you, each and every one of you. If you want to leave your commentary with us as well, ladies and gentlemen, feel free. Mm-hmm. You can email us at michomission at gmail dot com. Uh, and, and while you're doing that, on all the social medias, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Subscribe, follow, and like us on at Me Show Mission. And Me Show Mission is spelled M I C H E A U X M I W S I O N. Thank you very much. Uh, Aaron Fry. Hey, Aaron. Is from the Washington Heights uh, section of New York City. Oh, and in the Heights. In, in the Heights. And Bree Bree five seventeen is from Philly. Hey, that's pretty cool. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I, didn't, it, I don't know. It just never dawned on me that she might be from Philly. Uh, Jeffrey Thomas is fr- from Pensacola, Florida. Oh, okay. 
Janine is in New Haven, Connecticut. Okay. So All right. We would have watched the film virtually together. Right, 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 right. And uh, Deborah Battle, oh, sweet Deborah Battle, is from Chocolate City. Oh, Washington, Washington D.C. Keep, keep it, keep it chocolate, Deborah. I know it's a, it's an uphill battle with D.C. right now, trying to keep it chocolate. <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Um. There was one little story that actually got posted to our Facebook group. Right. I kept trying to pull up our Facebook group, and I kept going to the, the live presentation. Oh, is that what you were doing so over there? So then I just put my phone down. <laughs> I said, let me go ahead and put that down. Just put that down. Put that down. Uh, this was a, uh, an article that ran in the L.A. Times, mm -hmm. which speak uh, spoke about the championing of uh, Halle Garima, yes, sir, by Ava Duray, uh, Ava Duvernay, yeah, oh yeah, and her Array Films um, creative campus. Uh, Holly Garima, the, let let the missionary legendary director Holly Garima, probably best known for Sankofa, mm -hmm. the film Sankofa that came out in um, wow, was that like ninety? Was it 90? Yeah, 90, 91, 92. But but it was it has been difficult to see it mm -hmm. for years. And and, years. and and Lynn is nodding his head because we've actually run up into trying to see Sankofa for this show. Yep. Yep. Frankly, several times. Mm -hmm. You know, around the 100, 200 anniversary episodes and and they are are there's a remaster yes. of it. It's gonna start um streaming mm -hmm. on Netflix yeah. in the next few weeks. I know. Which is super exciting. I know. That is so that is so dope. But 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 shout out to Ava DuVernay, much like she did with Julie Dash, mm -hmm. really putting her muscle behind Holly Karima and and showcasing him and helping with with the restoration of this film yeah and it's so nice uh for this to to happen um uh, also i believe this coming saturday i believe because this this uh article is from the 24th mm -hmm. so yeah so this coming saturday garima who is 75 years old will receive the inaugural Vantage Award at the opening gala for the new Academy Muse Museum mm -hmm. of Motion Pictures, um, where he will be honored alongside Sof Sophia Loren, recipient of the Visionary Awards. And a Ava DuVernay, as a co-chair of the gala, you can imagine that it was, oh. it was her, you know, substantial muscle in Hollywood. Wow. Couple that, I'm sorry, not to cut you off, a couple couple of clarifications. It's from 1993. Okay. And it is on Netflix right now. Is it really? I actually clicked and and you know, you know how when you look it up, I was looking up the year and it said where you know how it says where you can watch it said Netflix right now. And I clicked on Netflix and then friggin Sankofa came up on my phone. And now all of a sudden it's coming up. Yeah, Robert Monroe Jr. hit us up in your in your defense. It just hit last Friday. That is crazy. That is crazy. That Sankofa is right there. I know. I know. I know. Wow. Now you, now you know what needs to what needs to go up there next. I mean, well, f first of all, let's celebrate Sankofa. Wow. Being on look, look y'all, Lynn and I huge. had a conversation trying to hunt down a print mm -hmm. like three or four years ago. Yep. Like, oh my goodness, just trying and then you couldn't find them. No. Nope. Like it was this or, weird or, or remember it was it was like, a weird DVD. Yeah, and it, but you, it was priced out. Because, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy that Sankofa is on Netflix. I know, right? That is that is that is but that is exciting. That's dope. And that also makes sense because Ava DuVernay definitely has a relationship with, yeah. with Netflix as well. So that absolutely makes perfect sense. Um, I almost dropped my phone. You, yes, you did. Like, like when it came out, it was said, and it came out and said, ah, that's Sankofa on my phone. 
<laughs> yeah, this is um really, really, really dope. Um, Robert Monroe Jr. is mentioning how Sankofa needs the criterion treatment. Yeah, oh my goodness, absolutely. You it know, goes without saying, if you've never seen Sankofa, please watch Sankofa. Mm -hmm. Like this really mm -hmm. is one of the great films. Yeah, yeah. And and I honest, I'll be honest, I've seen it once. And just remem remember, like, oh my God, this is like amazing. Maybe twice. Real? Yeah, yeah. Because this would you saw it back in the day when, you know, it you was know. it was like in the art houses. Exactly. Remember, it was in the art houses, and like maybe, like I'm gonna say I saw it twice. Yeah, yeah. I know I saw it. I know I saw it just the one time. Yeah. And it, so yes, because it kind of it went away. It went because unfortunately, you know, it was one of those that didn't. Well, and I, I think speaking of of this article, Holly Garima would would not compromise no. himself in the rights and everything that went along with that. So it it went away in a lot of ways. I mentioned Julie Dash, but I think both of them and and both of them coming out of the L.A. rebellion mm -hmm. tradition, mm -hmm. it seems like they have this in common. Just are uncompromising in their principles. Right. And that's not a good way to flourish in Hollywood. No. So no. these films in so again, God bless Ava DuVernay. Yes. Yes. Now she can just get killer sheep up there. Mm -hmm. Like like Array should just have an LA rebellion collection. What, you like know? just go and get all of them. Cause it's a bunch like those are the big ones. Mm-hmm. But like when you read about the LA, and it's funny because I got a couple of them bookmarked mm -hmm. here and there that they're like on the internet here and they're kind of, well, I'll just say I have them bookmarked. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is disgraceful the hoops you have to jump through, right, to see a lot of these films. Well, you know, you talk about I think, and who who are we to say what Ava DuVernay should should do? She's been doing smart things so she's right. good right right but if but if we could suggest if i could suggest anything for a ray to do that would be to go after the criterion crowd yeah do have an array collection yeah oh yeah that oh yeah would be because i would love to own well, I, 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 you got to imagine that that's the next. That's next. It would be a nice presentation. Mm -hmm. It's 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 we're 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 in that we're we're in that sweet spot mm -hmm. where that kind of stuff is happening. I just saw. Um, we didn't talk about it, but last Tuesday was the thirtieth anniversary of Low End Theory coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. I did see a couple and, of articles and, and about there. That. There's yes. like this box set of the seven inches that's coming out next year, and you see all of this stuff. But you know what's crazy? Low end theory and Nevermind, Nirvana's album came out the same day. Really? They actually people have talked about that date was because it's like that came out. Uh, Nevermind came out. The Red Hot Chili Peppers album came out. Like something else wow. came. Like this one day everything came out wow like all of these and changed the game right well you know the funny thing is i feel like like if nevermind came out mm -hmm. i feel like the momentum built for now i mean obviously low in theory was tribe called quest second album mm -hmm. and i remember i, I always kind of like I, I was really anxious when i bought low in theory because mm -hmm. their first album changed my life like right. actually changed my life so i was like how, how they gonna make a second album when the first <laughs> album actually had a soul on the road to damascus moment right right so what's the low end theory and i remember sitting and low end theory was better it's better and i couldn't even believe what i was listening and but like i didn't get on to uh nirvana for a minute Mm. after they came out I, you know significant it came out. i mean i wasn't down with nirvana i mean obviously some people were but <laughs> more than some <laughs> no 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 but i mean right, right, you right. know if, if nevermind came out like i don't know if smells like teen spirit was already playing on mt i just don't know i think it was it was already playing. it was already playing yeah because my brother put me on to it wow yeah yeah damon put me on to um he doesn't seem like the nirvana no guy. damon put me on to nirvana <laughs> and this is almost like a direct quote, like I said, I'm not listening 
to this rock. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. And Damon said, yo, you need to listen to the drums. Mm. And the funny thing is Dave Cruel, I don't know if you saw this, but Dave Cruel, the drummer yeah. who went on to do, uh, make, you know, form the Foo Fighters was talking to um, Pharrell and he said he stole all the drum licks from the Gap Band. <laughs> like, I forget the Gap Band drummer's name, but he, he told, look it up. Like, he, he was, it was a bit of a, uh, it was a big bit of a thing a couple of months ago, but he told Pharrell how he had, he, like, he studied the Gap Band drummer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think the, the drums on Smell Like Teen Spirit are the same drums for um, You Dropped a Bomb on Me. Get out. Like, they actually played them together. <laughs> But he did, Damon Williams. Damon Williams said, yo, these white boys are nice. And I said, I'm not listening to what, what is he said, yo, listen to the drums. Mm -hmm. And then that, that got me. And then, you know. Good but stuff. yeah, we're in that sweet spot where now they're they're packaging all this stuff because now we're old men <laughs> who are young men. Cause we cause yeah, because we just got disposable income now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, go buy that shit. But yeah, thank you, Ava DuVernay. And Yay, Sankofa. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Farrell Blackwell, who hails from uh, Chicago. All right. Uh, says Nirvana was during my white boy phase. Yeah. Yeah. Look, man. I don't know if I had a white boy phase. I love Nirvana. I still love Nirvana. I, I remember I, I remember when, when Kurt Cobain died. Like, I actually remember that moment. Like, a, I was working at a, um, at a bookstore. This is before the record store. Okay. I was working at a bookstore, and I remember a, a girl came in, and she was just wow. inconsolable. Mm -hmm. And she said, she started yelling. She said, you know, he's dead. He's dead. And that's how I found out. But yeah. Yeah. Nirvana. 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 All right. Low in theory. Same day. These kids don't know nothing about me. Don't be that. Oh no! Don't be don't, that guy. Don't be that. Don't be that guy. 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 I'm curious now that you bring that up. All right. Your your little creation movie mm -hmm. partner at home. What music does she listen to? Uh, Camille listens to listen to a lot of stuff. Yeah, listen to a lot. You of like her music. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, man. All jokes aside, I I, I like that the kids have their own music. They, I like that the kids. I like the their kids have their. Music. Every kid should have their own music. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there, man. All right. Let's get into our review, Vince. Okay. All right. Oh. Go down, death. <laughs> you see, it's like a comma in there. Yes. It's go down. Pause. Death, and then it's a exclamation, exclamation point. point. Yeah. It's James Wilden Johnson poetry. Give it. All right. Let's get into a little bit of um, trailer talk. And in trailer talk, we can answer a question that Farrell Blackwell just happened to was just throw the, out. Did, did, was that the break? So the break was you said. You said go down death. Okay, then that's the break. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I didn't feel like there was a break, so I didn't know. I just wanted to make sure. To, all right. Go it. ahead. All okay. right. All right. I got it. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Farrell Blackwell threw in a question. Okay. And this is probably definitely for you. All right. Who who is the current equivalent okay of a tribe called Quest? I don't know if I can answer that. Cuz the current equivalent would not be on my radar. Hmm. Hmm. That's that's a good point. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. Right. You know, think about it. Yeah, you ain't checking for Kendrick Lamar or anybody. Like well, that. but it would be a crew. What the? Well, I'll get out. See, it there, are, there aren't too many crews. Well, and now it's a group. group. It's a, right. Because it's crews. Wu Tang is a crew. Wu Tang is our age. No, but what I'm saying is Wu Tang is actually a crew. Right. It's made up of individual, like, yes, they record together, but more often than not, they record separately. Right. A tribe called Quest is a group. Right. So it, it's different. Right. It's so funny you should say that. All this stuff I have to watch. 
we got pulled into watching the Wu Tang show on Hulu. Oh, the um, <laughs> the, right, the, the show about the Wu Tang Clan. How'd you like it? We've watched the first couple of episodes. It's not bad. Yeah, it's enough. You know, should make Moore's in it. Nah. Yeah. yeah. Have you watched it? I looked at a little bit, and I was like, oh, I don't care. I it's you know, I mean, like you know, I don't, I don't. It's interesting seeing references that you picked up from the music. Yeah. Like Ghostface Killer actually does have two brothers with muscular dystrophy. I actually think I thought I read somewhere that he actually has more siblings. Okay. They actually well, he only mentions the two brothers that. with muscular right. dystrophy on the song. Yeah. Um but yeah, I don't know who the current who the equivalent to a tribe called quest would be. This will get edited back into the the main show. Okay. Um, but I think it's only fair that I give you, Vince, opportunity to share a few words about the recent passing of Melvin Van Peoples. <sighs> it's a shame. I mean, we're just losing giants. We're just losing giants. And, and I don't think you can overemphasize how important he was to black film. And even our relationship to him. Mm -hmm. I think you and I have had passionate conversations about Melvin Van Peebles. That's very true. Which I think speaks to the vitality that he brought to the form. Yes. Melvin Van Peebles, who passed away just this um, last week on the 22nd. He was an actor, filmmaker uh, who worked as a active filmmaker into the 2000s his feature film debut the story of a three-day past mm-hmm. from 1967 was based on his own french language novel la Pris- le permission and was shot in france um the film won an award at san francisco international film festival which gained him the interest of hollywood studios leading to his american feature debut watermelon man mm-hmm. in 1970 he is probably more most popular or most famous, however, for his best known work from 1971, Sweet Sweetback's badass song, considered one of the earliest and best regarded examples of the black exploitation genre. And it's always he is uh, survived by his uh, son, filmmaker and actor Mario Van Peoples. Um, yeah. Uh, he passed away um, at the age of 89 years old. Yeah, full life. God bless him. He has uh, his son Mario and um, Max. He has a son Max as well as a daughter Marguerite. Yeah. So. Yeah. Condolences. Our condolences to his family. Most certainly. Um, Robert Moreau says that his work the work of Mary Van Peoples is a blind spot of mine, so I can't wait to rectify that. Mary or Melvin? Melvin. Of Melvin, Melvin, yeah. Melvin. And and it says that the Criterion Collection, they just released their Melvin Van Peoples box set. Excellent. Is um, a three-day pass part of that? I, that's a good question. I don't know. I do not know. I will. As you were talking, I realized I've never seen it, and I said, we need to rectify that. What all is included in that? So it would be Watermelon Man... Sweet Sweetback's badass song, and what else? I will tell you. Un momenti. People, as you ask, criter- criterion. Okay. The Melvin Van Peoples Essential Films Criterion Collection. Included in this collection is. Watermelon Man from okay. 1970. Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. Don't Play Us Cheap from 1972. Oh, it, Don't Play Us Cheap is shortlisted for me, too. What else? And the final film, The Story of a Three Day Pass. That might be worth owning. Okay, excellent. Five, five discs, five Blu ray discs. Go to Criterion Collection and you can check that out. Probably doesn't include include uh, Mario Van Peebles' film Solo, where he plays a super soldier. No, no. Perhaps I, a cyborg. I don't recall off the top of my head. 
I think no. If 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 I'm reading the liner notes, that will be released on the uh, VHS VHS collection collection, the, the, the Mario Van Peebles collection. Yes, which will include Solo, where he plays a super soldier, and he has like a ball head. I'm just not a fan of Mario Van Peebles. Mario, Mario. I'm not yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm I know. Not, I'm not the big fan of Mario. I know. Either, I to know. Be honest, but. I know. I know. Mary Van Peebles had a film called Soul. He had another movie about werewolves. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I referenced that to Robert Monroe. I'm sorry. And it's not Robert Monroe. It's RM on YouTube. Okay. Uh, who who gave us that um, that information? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, I, I apologize. I, it, it only says RM, so it doesn't give me the full name. And I just quickly thought Robert Redrow. You don't want to talk about Marion Van Peebles' film Solo anymore where he plays a super soldier? I'm really good on, on that. <laughs> <laughs> We've spent enough time on Marion Van Peebles' film Solo. Maybe, maybe one day in May. Maybe one day in May we can talk about Solo. Because we won't be talking about it any other time. Any other time. During a year. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. We won't. All right. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, but to the question about who is the current equivalent of um, a tribe called Quest. Co tribe called Quest. Uh, Janine offered. There's a group called Spillage Village, made up of Earth Gang and JID. I'm not sure. Yeah, see, refers, so. <laughs> we we are aged. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Okay, <laughs> we are aged out of look, this conversation. Man, look, I mean, I'm glad the kids are making the hip hop. Um, RM on YouTube, give them props. Yes, or, or them, or their props. Them, them. Yeah. Uh, also mentioned Earth Gang, but thinks that more people compare them to Outcast. Okay. So, uh, AT Aliens, I think it's thirty years old. <laughs> it's not thirty years old. It's not thirty years old. Maybe not thirty, but AT Maybe about good. No, AT it might be close to AT Aliens just. Had to be because you know I'm on all these lists. ATL Big ATL Boy is get, selling some type of anniversary gear. It might be 2025. It's not 30 years old. If it's 30 years old, then I'm I'm ending. The Maybe show it's right not now. 30. Well, let's. I mean, let's look it up. Look up ATL. I'm Good. ending the show right now. If that if that album is 30 years old, let's see. AT aliens. No, 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 you're right. 96. So it's 25 years old. It's okay. 25 years I old, know. which is crazy. I know. I know. Which means my daughter is older than that, I, that album. Yeah. That's insane. Look, you remember all that stuff when all that stuff, like, like, like we're in that period where all the anniversaries are happening. We went to the Illmatic anniversary in DC a couple of years ago. At the Kennedy Center, where Nas was out there in front of the orchestra. I know exactly. That's where we are. We all, me and my peoples, we all got dressed up and went to the Kennedy Center and saw Nas do Illmatic with an orchestra. How you like that? Oh, God. Meanwhile, I was grooving a heavy D today. Look, <laughs> look, if low end theory is 30 years old, that that means three feet high and rising. I mean, obviously, people's instinctive oh, travels yeah, and paths yeah. and rhythm, like all them joints. I know. I know. You know, paid in full. I mean, hell, paid in full. Paid in full is 30. Paid in full is knocking on 40. Like, paid in full is 35 years old. Because paid in full is 86. Jesus. Jesus. And I was listening to Run DMC today. Mm -hmm. I mean, King of Rock has got to be 36, 37 years oh, old. Oh, God. So old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want my milk and cookies. I just we just need to end the show so I can go do something. Like, do something like it's 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 funny, and then we can get there's a um 
there was a Disney movie, and I don't know if my daughter is listening right now, but it was like called Let It Shine or somebody. It it had the the kid from Everyone Hates Chris, who starred on it. Oh, okay. And then he was like an MC, and and you know I I don't know if Courtney Vance like I think Courtney Vance played his dad, but you oh, know so it's like a Disney Channel. It was movie. like a Disney Channel movie, but okay. but but you know the kids of a certain age, it's like because it was black people. Okay. And I remember watching it or, you know, just sort of watching over Camille's shoulder. And I remember like, y- you know, it was like some old Footloose type thing where, where you know, Courtney Vance, ooh, the hip hop and the rapidly rap and we don't like it. Right, right. And right. it was like, yeah, but if dudes like our age, like you absolutely like hip hop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you, you 100% like hip hop mm-hmm. if you're our age and you're never going to say, oh, the rapidly rap. Okay, it's just weird how these markers of age. I know are shifting, it, but now we know how our parents felt. But we don't. No, we Again, do. because we, we you, you know, I, I I think I've mentioned this. My my friend said years ago that we were going to be the first generation that kept engaging in activities. That were the activities of young people. Like we're always gonna play video okay, games. Okay. Okay. We're always gonna buy comic books. We're always gonna buy sneakers. Yeah. Because we're always gonna listen to the hip-hop. generation before us. After a certain point, very they put much it away. Look, my yes, father yes. literally left his guitar. Yep. In Mobile, Alabama, because mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. said it is time to grow up. To grow up. Yep. Like I'm going to move to Baltimore yep. and get a job. And be a grown up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Whereas with us, it has been uninterrupted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The kind of stuff that we've been doing. And you know why? That's because that generation before us. How many of them is? Oh, if I had only kept my comics, right? Or right. If I, why wouldn't? Well, I don't know why I stopped drawing, right? Or whatever, right? You know? Um, if if for no other reason because you realize that how much that adds to the quality of your life. Right. Right. My um daughter has a has a friend that she carpools with sometimes and 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 Camille was wearing a, a, a Lauren Hill sweatshirt mm-hmm. the other day. And her, her friend's dad took him and saw the sweatshirt and said, how are you gonna win when you ain't right within? Because <laughs> right like right, you right. know Lauren Hill is actually ours. Right. Like y'all wear the shirt, but she's ours. So we know about her more than you do. True. So. Yeah, she is ours. Okay. Because that's, yeah, that's 20 years old. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to have some type of existential crisis. You're just going to keep naming <laughs> albums. You're just going to keep naming albums. <laughs> oh, no. Das Effects is 25 years old. The Fushnikens came out <laughs> 28 years ago. Well, here's the th- okay. Diggable Planets is 27 years old. Okay, well, here, here's, here's the thing. <laughs> like, yes, Lynn, all of them came out 30 years ago. Okay, well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. When, like, when, when is it <laughs> yours and when is it, like, the generation after? Like, because, like, you, you just turned 50. Yes. Right? So... You can say Lauren Hill is yours. Absolutely. Because it's maybe it's about 15, 20 years right, old. Right, right. It's like 90s. Right. Hip-hop. So you you were you were like in your late 20s, 30s. Right. 20 something years ago, I was in my 30s. So while I definitely was there for Lauren, right, right. is Lauren really mine? Or is it really Re- the 80s, 80s? Right, right. That is mine. I guess it's some overlap. It's so funny because we were talking about Wu Tang clan. Cause, cause we were watching the show, and I was telling, uh, when like I remember when Wu Tang Clan came out, and Damon, mm-hmm. Damon introduced me to Wu Tang Clan, and I remember like the first time I heard, uh, you know, protect your neck, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they're so harsh, right? They're so harsh. I'm, ooh, and I always say like Wu Tang Clan and Mob Deep mm-hmm. were my two when I first heard them. I was like. <gasps> They're so harsh. Yeah. See, and I was just actually just talking to somebody 
because I was listening to Run DMC live from Hollis Queens, mm-hmm. which is a, a, a song with them like live at a at a at a party that played on, on the radio. And I remember everybody who was in the hip hop at that time going bananas for that song because Run curses <laughs> on that song. <laughs> Every everybody's right because if you say you heard my rhymes, we're going to have to fight because I just made the mm up last night. Yes, and I was like, "Yo, that was earth shattering." Yes, yes, but that was my hip hop. That was your. <laughs> so I don't know if I can really claim Lauren. <laughs> well, God, let's get to the review. I was about to say of I, this movie from 1945. 19, 1945. <laughs> Go down, Death. Joe, old time. I, I, I told Wendy as we were walking, she was like, "Oh, you got to watch your movie." And I said, "Oh, don't worry, I have time to watch the movie. It's one of Lynn's old timey <laughs> black movies. It's only going to be like an hour." <laughs> and I hadn't even looked. I hadn't even looked. We went for a walk. She did. She was like, "Don't you need to watch your movie?" I was like, "Oh, I got time. Don't worry." <laughs> like an hour. Lynn his old timey Negro films. Featuring the colored players <laughs> of Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, God. Lynn's old timey Negro films. 57 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes is going to be a musical number and people dancing. It's like, uh, don't worry, we're good. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's get to your old-timey Negro <laughs> film. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go Down Death, directed by actor Spencer Williams. Playing Big Jim Bottom, a local club owner who decides to frame newly arrived preacher Jasper Jones, played by Samuel James, to prevent Jones from influencing the town. After securing an incriminating photo photo of Jasper with three women, Jim is approached by his aunt Caroline, who adopted him in childhood. And she pleads for him not to carry on with Jasper's ruin. When Jim ignores her, Caroline prays to the ghost of her husband, who appears and guides her to the photo, although she is soon caught. From there, the wages of sin reveal themselves in this morality tale of good versus evil. 1945's Go Down death was the choice of Lynn Webb. Lynn, how would you like to begin our conversation about Go Down Death? I thought this was a absolutely interesting film. Um, and not interesting in the way that you say interesting, <laughs> which is code for uh, let me make up some bullshit about this. This is um, I thought this was a very interesting film because I think more so than any other film that we've watched, the opening of this movie felt very much like a snapshot of Black America in 1945. Mm. And I think that's because a lot of this film is takes place in a church, actually filmed in a church in 1945 right um with a large congregation there in the church listening to a sermon there are full on sermons there are full on eulogies mm-hmm. in this movie in this morality play as you point out there is a scene that uh ostensibly takes place at a juke joint and i think for some reason, even though we've seen movies that take place in like in 
quote unquote clubs or, you know, um, you know, theaters and things like that from around this era from mm -hmm. the thirties and forties, for some reason, the way that this film was shot, the, the way that Spencer Williams, you know, set his camera and the way that this viewed, it actually felt like we were in an actual juke joint. Okay. And we were watching people actually have a good time. It was almost like he threw a party and then just turned on a camera as opposed to having people on a set and saying, act like you're you're having a good time. Mm -hmm. This actually looked like there was a camera inside a party where people were having a good time. And I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really interesting to see how people were dressed in, at the time, how they were laid, how they how they danced. I mm -hmm. thought the dancing the dancing felt more authentic and energetic even though, even though I think that the music that was playing over there, I think that may have been like kind of like dubbed in cuz they were dancing to their own uh, total, clearly a different beat. But um it they whatever they were dancing to, it looked authentic and they were having a good time and they were stepping and, and it was it was just I really felt engaged by all of that. You know, there were scenes where guys were sitting playing cards with one another and they look like they're actually like, you know, sitting there playing cards. If I didn't know any better, they could have been playing spades for all Maybe. Maybe, you know? Um, so a lot of that I felt was very interesting for this film. That's the only, that's about the opening five to seven minutes of this movie. We cut back to the juke joint later for, uh, as you pointed out, a dance number, <laughs> <laughs> um, which, it, but it's a couple dancing, looking like they're maybe, it's 1945, so they're not jitterbugging, which I think is definitely a 50s thing, but it looks like akin to that. Like, okay. You know, they're dancing to Stephanie, he's twirling the, his girl and everything like that. Um, and I remember watching it and saying, oh my God, if Idlewild had just ha half as much energy as this couple right now right. is giving me, because it's set around the same time, mm -hmm. it's like, oh my God, it, it would have been perfect. And, you know, you know, my big lament of when people are dancing, how is it shot? So, is it shot in a way so that we can appreciate the dancing? This is shot. You can see them. Full yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's shot very well. And you could see them grooving. And it was fun. I actually was really engaged. And, you know, they they were smiling. They looked like a, 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 a they actually looked like a couple that were on the dance floor dancing and just getting their getting their freak on a little bit. And it was it was fun. It was in, in, in um infective. I, I was I just really enjoyed it. Um, I talked about this movie has like a full on sermon that a, a character dies later in this film mm -hmm. and we are invited to that character's funeral and we get the full funeral. Yes. From the sermon by the preacher all the way to the burial. Mm -hmm. We are there. We are fly on the wall for the whole thing. And it is at this sermon where the preacher recites, I don't think recites the full passage, but definitely recites passages from the poem that is the inspiration mm -hmm. for Go Down Deaf. The poem uh, also titled Go Down Deaf by James Weldon Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, the poem actually is noted as a funeral sermon. So it made sense to be using it as a as a sermon in this film. And I thought that was kind of interesting as well, because it the poem, which definitely speaks about, you know, um, it actually speaks more embracing mm -hmm. of death, of death as an entity, right. you know, a, de a death as an entity that works hand in hand with the Lord. Right. You know? Right. Um, so I thought that was actually interesting because that's usually at least i've never really heard that message given mm -hmm. at a at a sermon at a funeral so i was like oh that's kind of cool i you know if you just sit there and focus on the words of it it was actually kind of moving a mm -hmm. little bit which is not why i expected from this movie and you don't expect all of this considering like you said this film is only 
57 minutes long. Mm -hmm. But that's because the story of the film is bare bones. Right. Uh, It starts with Spencer Williams, who most people, if you know anything about these these uh these times uh he is a actor and filmmaker definitely made a lot of uh, quite a number of films in 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 his heyday in the 30s and 40s but he's more popularly known for his portrayal in the amos and andy tv show yes you know not to be confused with the amos and andy radio show which was voiced by white guys right but when it went to television they had to like oh we got to put up a shut up it's got to be black guys and spencer williams was um cast in the show um and as you yeah, as andy as andy mm-hmm. and and if you watch any of those shows he's actually pretty good in it for what for what it is for what it is yeah yeah good um so in but it was interesting that this film which is his third film in a trilogy mm-hmm. of morality plays that he's putting on it gives like it, it just gives you a different sense of the man because if you only know him from the Amos and Andy TV shows, you don't I w- would never have thought that he would be the mind behind these more religious, you know, uh, films. But this was his bread and butter of the time, you know, mm-hmm. and, the, and, and it stems from his upbringing and wanting to tell these stories. Um, I also thought that it was very interesting at this time, this film being set in 1945 where America is deeply at war. Mm -hmm. And while Hollywood is definitely focusing on some war films, it is also practicing more of its escapist fare as it's always done, trying to give people, you know, different things to think about. Whereas this black film is more serious minded. Right. It's, it's, it's definitely a drama, you know, at the end of the day. Um, Despite, like I said, the story is bare bones. Spencer Williams, he he's got this juke joint. All of a sudden, you know, everybody's coming there. The place looks packed to me. Yeah. Apparently, it was packed more because, <laughs> or maybe that wasn't a Sunday. Perhaps. Yeah. Because uh, he's mad that a new preacher has come to town, and all of a sudden, people are feeling some type of way about going to his juke joint, and then all of a sudden, they're showing up at the church. Which, to be fair. When they show it on a Sunday, it's packed. Right. Um, so he devises this scheme that he's going to get these three chicks to be photographed with the preacher in a compromising position, a.k.a. them in his home standing around him <laughs> with one of them sitting on their table with her skirt hiked just slightly up looking like leggy peggy yes from uptown saturday night but now for before you say anything this was the 1940s right where a little leg was a little too much yeah yeah. that was the difference between like you know oh you can't watch this this is not for children Mm -hmm. um and now Capturing the pre- preacher in his compromising position with these pictures now hopes to blackmail the preacher. But that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how you were going to reconcile that part of the plot. Because literally the next scene, <laughs> Aunt Caroline shows up. <laughs> who I seen the whole thing. <laughs> I seen it. I seen it. I seen you sneaking in the back with your cameras. She, she saw the whole thing. I saw the two dudes. I saw the dudes. I, I, saw, I the saw the dudes. sisters following you into the patronage pastor. You don't have to worry about it. I know. I know what's happening. I seen it. I seen it all. <sighs> ah, Sister Carol. I'm like, all right. There are malls in here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, I'm like, well, now where's the story going to go? <laughs> Because the guys say, "Well, we got our, we got the pictures. We out." Boop, 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 boop. They give the pictures to um, to Spencer, and he's going to hold this over the pastor's head. But Aunt Caroline, who is who is related to Spencer and lives with Spencer, is like, "No!" And they get into a, a, a 
into a what I believe is a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. It looked like a dance. Mm-hmm. From which Aunt Caroline, obviously, it was one fox trot too many dies. Yeah, it's a hit. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, she did. I, th- I forgot. She does hit her head on the safe. It's a hit. She bangs it pretty hard. Mm-hmm. And it's actually a very <laughs> disturbing scene when it happens. <laughs> right, right. Um, so from there, <laughs> the film takes a turn in that the Spencer Williams character is introduced to his conscience. Well, well, you skipped over the ghost. Well, the ghost. The, okay, yes, right. The, the ghost of or the Aunt, angel. Caroline, Aunt Caroline's. Yeah. Aunt Caroline's. Uh, I, 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 I'm assuming like husband who passed away. Yeah. Uh, angel Joe. The Angel Joe uh, appears to her in for 1945 in for this extremely low budget film. A piece of special effects that's actually very it was, effective. It was. It, that's why I didn't want you to skip over it. It was. A very nice moment. Very with nice the moment. shadow. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Very yeah. nicely done. I, yeah. I I gotta give props to that. Mm-hmm. Um because Angel Joe shows her where the pictures are. Yeah. So that that was actually pretty cool. Um and then at her at, at, at her funeral, it's her funeral that we are we visit, we are shown images of heaven. Yeah. People walking in heaven, a actual death riding his white steed to come uh, uh, gather up Caroline's soul. All of these images taken from another film, from a silent film, yeah, from years ago. And I, I, I don't know whether or not they were used with with, with their permission or what I, what have you, but they have pro- they used it in this film, um, and that. While not being the the best edited piece, actually shows a level of imagination mm-hmm. that you don't often find in these films. Mm-hmm. So that too, while not well, you know, it, it it it's not executed well. I like the idea. I get what they're going going for. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, okay, I'm. I'm with you. Does it go on a little long? Yes, it do- goes on a little a little long. But I think I Vince got it. I don't know if I did. Oh, maybe you did. Maybe did. There's All a right. moth in here, at least. Yeah. It's, we're having fun with moths. Yes. On the Michelle mission. So all of that to say that this film is very interesting until, like I said, Spencer is visited by his conscience, mm-hmm. who takes over the last five to ten minutes of this movie. Scaring the bejesus out of Spencer. Yeah. So much so that he takes a comedic run across town, across what I believe is a desert all of a sudden, to his demise at where he can't run anymore. Because he literally just passes out. Yes. And dies. He drops dead. And that's the film. Yeah, it's a, like it's a, it's a curious film. It's a morality play. I don't think the beats of it one hundred percent work, but I like what they're going for. The person uh, Spencer Williams is, you know, he he's a presence, mm-hmm. so you, yeah. you don't mind him. Unfortunately, as much as he is in the film, there's a long stretches where he's not in the film. Yeah. To the detriment. And this film uh then rests on the shoulders of, I believe, Samuel James, yeah. who plays the preacher. Yeah. And he is the less said about Samuel James, the better. He looks like he got a fresh haircut he, before the film started. I was going to say that his fade was real his tight. His fade was tight. <laughs> For night, I said somebody hooked him up. It's big with the, well, I want to think that his father hooked him up because unfortunately he looks like a little boy. 
He, he looks like a little boy. There ain't yeah. no stank on his hang low, bro. Yeah. He looked like a little kid. And it was it it and he's introduced as the new young preacher. Right. So the youth is supposed to be a part of his, you know, his image. Yeah. But dude, he could have been an hour gang. He is yeah. that young looking. And he has no presence yeah. at all. He can, He's reading his lines. Yeah. He, like all of the extras in the film, is constantly reminding you where the camera is. <laughs> because now while the extras, they are just looking in the camera, he keeps looking at the camera and <laughs> the dumb smile yeah and yeah. it just totally totally takes you out of the film there's another person who plays um i think uh aunt caroline's niece betty uh, lou betty lou yeah she's deer in headlights as well um and it's a shame because especially the preacher he's asked to hold up a little we're asked to be invested in him at least a little bit and he doesn't hold up his end of the film and ultimately that's to the detriment of the movie and fortunately it's only 57 minutes it's a curious it's a curious film but it could have been so much more i, I think the irony is is that for a film that wants to make this case for living a moral life mm -hmm. and staying on the straight and narrow. It doesn't make a good case for it. No, because as you say, you have these significant moments that show a church service. And then you have these moments that show the jute joint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you have to pick which environment you want to be in, the jute joint is the one with the most life. Yes. Like, I, I I don't know if I disagree with you because I think there were churches like this. Mm -hmm. But I think as a depiction of the black church, this is not the best depiction I've seen. Like, this is a very sedate, very, okay. it's, it, you know, kind of lifeless. Oh, almost. certainly. But I'm talking about for more for the time. Right, but even for the time, oh, really? like like okay. I, I I was looking at like body and soul, yeah, is yeah. 1925. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, and it's a silent film, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and some of the reels are missing, mm -hmm. and Paul Robeson's black church, you know, Paul Robeson as the preacher in Body and Soul and Oscar Micheaux's direction, it just captures the the the, the life of it. That's true, but in a way that you don't get. In with this. this, which is a shame because I think Spencer Williams is a pretty good director. Yeah. Like yeah. we talked a little bit about that moment when um the, the angel mm -hmm. of Joe comes and he has that and he's superimposed on the the, oh, the, 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 the portrait, the portrait of, of, of Joe. Right. But the whole film, you get the like Spencer you you're not surprised that this is his third film. Mm-hmm. And he knows the language of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. To fast forward to the end, I actually really, really enjoyed the conscience sequence. You did with his voice, kind of guilting him, and and there's there's the um the pictures of of what he's done flashing. Like I thought it was kind of expressing expressionistic almost. Yeah, because then it shows images of hell. Right. But and Which then when cool. it brings in those 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 images from the Italian film, mm -hmm. it's not as abrupt. Right. That this is a different film because Williams has set up mm -hmm. that this character is losing it mm -hmm. because of what he did. But at the end of the day, Spencer Williams is such a presence, and and Samuel James as as the pastor, Jasper Jones is not mm -hmm. that that Spencer Williams completely overwhelms him. Yeah, just as a person, Myra Hemings, which I, I guess I should mention, one of the founders 
of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. How about that? Right? As aunt, first, one of the first presidents, right? Yeah, I, yeah. So aunt, aunt, as Aunt Caroline doing her doing her thing, isn't the best actress. No, but at least she has a little life mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. As you said, Samuel James comes on screen. He is the most passive. Like I kept waiting for someone to show me how he was pulling people to church. <laughs> right. Like I kept trying to see because he's just he's getting free haircuts. Like he's passive. And in a lot of the scenes, I don't know if you notice, he literally was not moving. No. Like he would just sort of stand there. And everyone's moving around him. And he's got this sort of soft voice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think this is his only film. And I think more than any other part of the film, for the message that Spencer Williams is trying to get across, mm -hmm. his performance really lets it down. Exactly. It really lets it down. Because it is, like you said, a, like this neat little moment or, or this neat little little bit of black film history where Spencer Williams was trying to make these he made these message films mm -hmm. and like you said this is part of a trilogy one of the films has been lost right unfortunately but now I want to see the other film mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and see how he kind of did with it yeah because it's 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 a noteworthy addition it is to this conversation yes and to the history of of what we're talking about and even at an hour mm -hmm. it was there were moments where i kind of drifted because outside of spencer williams outside of Meyer ham emmings their performances you could tell that the other performers yeah were 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 either very amateurish or or perhaps not actors at, at all, all. Yeah. and it's a shame it's a shame it, it's a shame because a, a lot of times we talk about these early films and the direction mm -hmm. will let it down but i have to say i i, I really like spencer williams yeah as it, a director yeah, it, you can tell this one is not the direction it's right just, it's just the it's just the actors right and if you want to say that because this is a spencer williams clearly a spencer williams joint that maybe he still is a bit at fault because he cast these people yeah but you know at the end of the day you know you cast who you cast and then you, you're making these movies well the whole the whole story around spencer williams making these films and and how he got the um the financing mm -hmm. from um from a white finance or, or production company I'm trying to get the actual name Be because that's a story in in of itself how the um you know the sac amusement enterprises right which were which was this 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 white company that was basically trying to get into the business mm -hmm. of race films mm -hmm. and and spencer williams really negotiated this financing for three of these films this this trilogy and I do wonder if this was a, a, a an example of financial constraints. Okay, like I got you know, like yeah. I got this 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 pot of money, and and rightfully, and I kind of I agree with this decision. I'm going to spend it on the film. Mm -hmm. you, you know, these production the moves, production values, the, the production yep. values, and 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 giving myself more room to actually direct mm -hmm. in a way that you don't necessarily see in a lot of the the race films from this moment yeah so yeah smart decision yeah yeah so i guess what we come back to as we always come back to though is would you recommend it i would okay i would recommend go down death i think that it is a like I said, I think it, it's a, a curious film, um, despite the weak links of the co-lead in the in the pastor. I think that the story that it tries to tell, the inventiveness of the direction, is um, 
it's timeless, honestly. I mean, like you said, it's, it's good versus evil. Uh-huh. Um, hell versus the heaven versus hell. Uh, I do think that the images of black life, you know, if maybe not so much the church, and I, and I think the church scene in here resonates more so with me because as opposed to body and soul, if I remember correctly, the scene in body and soul, while definitely was more lively, I seem to remember that looking like it was a set. Okay. Whereas this is, is an actual is church. actual church. Right. You know, so that, and that's why it really spelled spelled out to me. And I think those scenes, those actual scenes of black life, like the funeral scene, like the burial, you see them walking into an actual graveyard. Right. You know, um, that could have been a graveyard in Germantown. It was like to my eyes. That, right. That's how how lifelike it felt. I think the image of that couple dancing, like if if, if I could pull that out of Go Down Death, I would watch that a, a bunch of times. I like some of the dance stuff that they were right. doing. They look so much fun. But and, and I think Spencer Williams as a filmmaker, as a person of of note in black Hollywood, I think this is an admirable addition to his resume, mm -hmm. you know, where I think people could easily be get lost in Amos and Andy and not be, maybe and maybe some of the more um, sillier comedies that he was part of mm -hmm. earlier. Um, I think this gives you uh, the other side of his coin. And so I definitely would recommend Go Down Death. I agree. I agree for those reasons. I also think it is actually a really nice contrast yeah. to the work that Oscar Michelle is still doing at this point. Mm -hmm. And when you think about what we've talked about with, with well, body and soul, but, but I know he ran into the issue I'm about to talk about in a few films where, where censors mm -hmm. and critics said that Michelle's work was more um lurid mm -hmm. you, you know the the censors would talk about the way he depicted sexual um sexual subjects and and even in body and soul where they had to go in and recut it yeah so that paul robeson wasn't actually a preacher right he was someone pretending to be a preacher mm -hmm. because oscar michelle had a lot of issues with organized religion mm -hmm. so to have spencer williams on the other side, kind of championing religion and 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 this this sort of straight ahead morality, but also having the skill as a director mm -hmm. to make some pretty solid work. I think it's a really nice again addition to our conversation about these films from this period. So so yeah, I think I would recommend it too. Plus, it's fifty seven minutes. Yeah. It's 57. <laughs> Right. You got to again, again. Lynn's old timey Negro films. <laughs> you know, you're, not, wo you're welcome to dig in the crates uh, too. Dig in the crates too. You know, uh, I like to dig maybe to the fifties. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I don't think you've pulled a movie from the fifties yet. What year is uh the the double oh, the flesh in? Okay, yeah, yeah, right. And you know, I'll pull some Sidney Poitier. Okay, all right. Right, that ain't that ain't, that ain't digging in the crate. Right. Sydney Portier, Sydney Portier ain't a dig. That ain't a it's dig. Not, that ain't digging, digging in the crates. Come on, man. Right, you know you got to get to the forty fives in between oh, the albums. Forty five in between the albums. <laughs> yes, but yes, I would also recommend. All right, go down death. So go check out go down death, ladies and gentlemen. Recommended to you by Vince and Len of the Michelle Mission. Next week. Oh man. Before Here we get into that, we go. But before we do, before we go, before we go, Vince, we invite you all to uh, email us all your thoughts and concerns. Email us at Michelle at gmail.com. Like and follow us on all the social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube at Michelle Mission, Two Men, One Podcast, every black film ever made, where you can go to our website and hit swag and check out all the cool designs and gifts that we have available to your buying pleasure via our good friends at t public the michelle mission is a proud member of the podglomerate thepodglomerate.com they make podcasts work all right next week ladies and gentlemen 
It's here. Here we go. Here we go. Octboober. Octboober is here, ladies and gentlemen. What is that? Octboober. Why are you saying that? Octboober. It's time for horror films. Black horror films. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. I made a banner and everything. <laughs> oh my God, you did. <laughs> See, but it looks like Octboober. That's what I said, Octboober. Yeah, but it looks like we're going to do like Porky's. <laughs> what? The, why is this thing? Or weird science. What's boob? All I see is boob. It's boo. It's, it's boo burr. <laughs> this did not come up at the staff meeting. <laughs> Let's just take down this banner. <laughs> <laughs> Put up the banner talking about um our your girl. Oh, uh, not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Black Horror Month. <laughs> All month long, Vince and I are going to be giving you the best in horror films. Well, we hope to. Yes, we hope to. We've got some choice selections. We do. For we you, do for you. Um, now. We next week, Vince is up. At yes, that. sir. And Vince has a film that we actually have done a talk back. We for. did a talk back. That's but right. Vince w- reminded me that we actually had not reviewed the film yet. We did not. And what film is that, Vince? That would be the 2019 sophomore effort from writer director. Jordan Peele, Lupita Nyong'o, Winston Duke, Yahya Abdul Mateen. Remember, he was in there. He's in the beginning. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth Moss. Yes, I do. I'm a huge Elizabeth Moss fan. We are starting the month of October off with us. Yes, sir. Okay. We are starting with us. Do we want to tell them what we're watching? All, all I think we. I'm. I'm. I am super excited. Okay. All right. So after us, after us, I will pass the, the scarecrow head to Lynn. <laughs> yes. Where we will, I will be bringing to you a film that Vince and I actually have reviewed already as well, but not on our show. That's right. We reviewed it with our good friends on the Ghouls Next Door pa- podcast, but it is our time to bring it to the Michelle Mission with Bernie Casey as Dr. Black, <laughs> Mr. Hyde. Dr. Black, Mr. Hyde. Dr. Black, Mr. Hyde. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. That should be interesting. Yes. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> it should be very interesting. Then I will pass the baton back to... To my good friend, Vincent. Back to me, and we will continue with the work of Yahya Abdul-Mateen in a film that was just in the theaters. Mm -hmm. The remake slash reimagining of Candyman. Say it again. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) If only they had done that in the movie. (laughs) And then... And then Lynn will bring the month to an end. I will bring the month to an end. I have been waiting for this so long. This is a good pull. Because I am going to the year of 1986. Mm-hmm. I am going deep, deep, deep in the crates, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. Because I am not going to be reviewing one film. We are going to be reviewing two films. From 1986, our main course will be the irresistible grace jones yes in vamp yeah yeah that's a that's a good good pull i'm really looking forward to vamp i have no idea what you're what else you're about to say this was also not at the staff meeting whatever it is you're about to say as an appetizer for vamp Uh uh-huh also from 1986 okay we will be reviewing 
a heretofore relatively unseen short film. Okay. Because it is a film that was hidden away from the general public. Okay. Even though it had a short, very short, very brief theatrical release, making it available for review on the Michelle Mission. And what is this? But it was hidden away from the general public because it was sequestered in a special theater in Florida. It is a sci fi film. Why are we doing science fiction in October? But it still has horror tinges to oh, it. God's sake. What 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 are you what what is this one? What, what what from 1986 we will be reviewing Captain EO oh! with Michael Jackson. It's not horror though. Like I really want to do Captain EO, but I think we should wait until April. And yet we're not because we're reviewing it in October, because it does have some scary elements to it. And thus, have you seen Captain Neo? No! Then what are you talking about <laughs> with some scary elements? Because I read the plot. I read the entire plot. So we're reviewing Vamp and Captain EO. To close out, I am against Captain EO. <laughs> I'm against. I'm, I'm gonna just go ahead and start. We we can start the review. We should have waited till April. Like that's gonna be the beginning of my review of Captain EO. Well, have you seen Captain EO? No, but I know it's robots and aliens. Which you don't know whether or not it's scary. Just cause it's scary. So 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 if we didn't do black movies. Mm -hmm. You'd want to do Aliens. Aliens is a sci-fi movie, but the lot it, it also uh, qualifies as a horror movie. Aliens is not horror. It, it is horror. Alien is horror. Well, that's what I was Alien, talking about. I'll the give first you. One. I well, I said one. Aliens. Well, I'm sorry. Because Aliens is also scary. Alien is more of a horror movie than Captain EO. Okay, okay. Then, then let's talk about Alien. Alien falls into both camps captain eo doesn't you don't know that you haven't seen it oh, for guys okay all right all right all right let the record show that i was against this before we talk about it but go ahead all right so that's what we're doing that's we're doing we're for horror movie and, and some nonsense <laughs> that lynn came up with on his own it's like that in, in boob tober what was it booby tober <laughs> Was it Akboober? Titty Tober? Ak was that what you had up in there? <laughs> you just put the Neil Long is the, you put the Neil Long banner up. See, see, you say you say this, and yet I was thinking about you. And as much as I like to champion how Neil Long is the yes, finest actress in Hollywood history, yes. just for you, I was going to put up Anika Noma ah! Rose. <laughs> Finest actress. See, in Hollywood we didn't history. talk about this. this <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we're going to start with us. <laughs> it's funny, though. It's funny now that we're talking because I thought about doing us in April. Oh, really? If you think about yeah, see now us could like technically us could fit like both. technically us is science fiction. Yes. Yes. It could fit in both. Some films do that. Yes, I don't think Captain EO is one of them, but we'll see. We will see. I guess we'll see. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> uh Booby Tober, horror and breast cancer awareness <laughs> at the <Michelle> show. <laughs> Care of Country Club is with Keith. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It was a perfect, perfect nod to go out. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Until next week. <laughs> He's Vincent. I'm Len. And in party.